Well, we're here at the All-Star break, and the test has been taken. The grades have been given, and we'll give you our first half grades for this Astros team and what they're going to do to launch into the postseason in the second half. Let's talk about this draft picks and All-Star week on this edition of Locked on Astros. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Veerling's back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope to, that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can you find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. If you need tickets to a concert, a game, Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I know Brett's used it a lot, and guys, thank you for making us your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to us. Make us uh, give us a big fat thumbs up and make us your first listen. Become an everyday here on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast, and we are going to go ahead and. And take a look at what was the first half of the season. I put on quotes because it wasn't really the first half, but uh, the All Star break is kind of seen as the um, the first half where the um, the season kind of is at the halfway point. Even though mathematically it's really not, but for the Astros with all the the playoff games they typically play, it kind of is if you factor in all the playoff games. So uh, where are the Astros now? Let's look back at. Um, like let's give them some grades, look at the draft picks they've done. And if the season were to end today, hmm. who would they be playing in the playoffs? And is it a good thing? So that's what we're going to be addressing on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast that starts now. Yeah, man, look, I, I really like where this team's sitting, Eric. I mean, if you would have told me all the injuries that this team has been through from Jordan Alvarez to Jose Altuve, McCullers, Urquidy, Garcia, um, the problems with the bullpen, all these different things. And you would have told me that the Rangers had 156 plus run differential and they were in first place. I would think that the Astros would be like in a 10 game deficit. But going into the second half, the Astros are in a two game deficit. And I absolutely love the position that we're in. I think this team has weathered the storm and we'll get into the grades here in a second. But I really, I really um, think that a week of rest and a break for this team is what they need. Um, but Eric, you know, I mean, let's talk about this because for certain parts of this ball club, they have really had to step up big um, in the, in the pitching category. Had the pitchers not done their job, um, this team probably wouldn't have the record they have. Yeah, I know you made a you took a gamble this year by letting Justin Verlander go. And I know he wanted a lot of money. The Astros were not going to pay him that money. But then you, you gambled by not, a not having a GM to really address the situation because they uh, James Click was not renewed or whatever happened there. But um, you also didn't go out and get any def options. And so what you had to rely on is a lot of rookie starters. And so I think the Astros have the third most starts by rookies this year. I think it's in yeah. the 30s, like 36 or 37, something like that. And so the Astros are having to do stuff that they haven't had to do in a while. And that's rely on people that don't really have the track record. And in fact, Brandon Backey is approaching his major league inning um, wow. record or if he hasn't already passed it so uh, this is you're asking people to do stuff that I don't think anybody expected JP France I think he's turning okay. into a great major league pitching pitcher uh, will the league eventually adjust to him a little bit yes 
Uh, Ronel Blanco, I think he is who he is as a reliever. He, he was somebody that's going to give us a home run ball, somebody that's going to give us some walks, somebody that's going to strike out some batters. That's exactly who he is as a starter as well. So, uh, But you, you've seen enough positivity out of him. So the Astros have had to dig really deep this year, and the season's not even over. So uh, I know we talked on the yesterday's show that the Astros are about to get healthier. And uh, right. Alvarez said at the home uh, before tonight's home run derby that he's feeling good. And um, he's hoping that maybe uh, once he gets back from all-star break, that he goes down, plays a couple of games, and he's able to come back and help the Astros. Because Alvarez is a big part of this, what the Astros are missing. And that's consistent offense. Exactly. And and really, um, I wrote an article for um, ESPN out there, the game in Louisiana. And and one of my biggest critiques of this of this uh, first half of the um, season is the inconsistency of the offense where you have an offense when you do have your guys out there um, firing on all cylinders. There's no question, no doubt what this offense can do. But one of the people I'm really looking for, Eric, in the second half to excel and exceed what he's done so far is Alex Bregman. I mean, Kyle Tucker stepped it up. Um, you know, Jose Abreu has stepped it up. But you talk about those those names of people that have contributed that you didn't think contributed. Remember the interview I did with Corey Jolks. Um, I also remember, I think he did an interview on Astros Future. Or no, maybe it was Michael Connor was talking about how he – interviewed Corey Jolks in spring training and their conversation was centered around the minor leagues, just like our conversation was centered around the minor leagues. Boom. He gets put on the 26 man roster and he ranks top five for RBI for rookies. He is hitting around 269. This kid really has had a solid year. The glove, he robbed Buki Betts of the lead off over in LA. So he's flashed the leather. And then you mentioned JP France. I mean, there's Ronel Blanco. You mentioned, Brennan Belak, look, this team has been next man up all season. And so um, let's get into the grades because I think I may, you you may have been like the kid that came to me asking for some extra credit because I have a starting pitching grade and you may have changed my mind talking and reminding me about the JP France, but I want to see, um, do you want me to give my grade first to the starting pitching and then you go from there? Yeah, you probably changed it from what you sent earlier. So go ahead. Well, I originally gave them a B plus, okay. But what what I was thinking about overall was if I split the starting pitchers and relief pitchers, I'm gonna have to bump the starting pitchers up to an A simply because of Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez has the best ERA in Major League Baseball out of starters, and so and should be starting the All Star game, and he isn't, which is fine. I'm okay with that with his recent ankle issue. But Eric, I think that this starting pitching, I think is the only portion of this ball club that deserves a true a going in. Do you give them a higher grade or a lower grade? Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say until you stole my thunder. But uh, if you look at what they're doing, I'm going to look at this. I'm looking up right now, the Astros starting rotation. It's not actually as good as I thought it was, but uh, their ERA is 3.74. Uh, but if you look at their whip, it's 1.26, which is both about, well, the ERA is fourth in baseball in, in terms of starters and their whip is 12th in baseball. But okay. if you take into consideration and uh, let's look at the quality starts. Uh, do they have this on here? But uh, let me see quality starts. But if you think about what we, we just talked about, who's been uh, starting these games for the Astros, exactly. it's been a whole bunch of people that the Astros weren't expecting to rely on. So the fact that they are where they are is why I would give them an A minus. And uh, okay. you have one of the best pitchers in baseball. If he was healthy and Dusty Baker wasn't so worried about him getting injured in the game. Uh, I think that Framer Valdez should definitely be starting over Garrett Cole. And it was so funny that uh, he was listing names out the other day and, uh, um, and Dusty Baker said, Oh yeah, Garrett Cole just pitched the other day. He's definitely not going to be pitching, uh, but now he is. And so definitely a, a situation where uh, I think that if it's not your guy, you're a little bit more willing to throw him out there. But right. when it's your guy, you're kind of like, yeah, I'd rather have you for October. I'd rather have you for that. And it's just like having the right 
ticket for a game and it's like finding the right ticket for a game and uh this episode is brought to you by game time yeah that's right and before i mention that look jp franco and el blanco both have a combined nine quality starts as rookies and look if you want a quality start if you want a quality app to go to baseball games to you need to go to game time buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets with the best price guaranteed. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hype for the fun you'll have. You don't have to plan months in advance. It's easy to find tickets. You can buy them the same day. I've literally been walking up to Minute Maid Park, purchased my ticket, and I haven't, I couldn't be happier with the price and the customer service that I got. So forget planning the game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section, and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent the difference to your account get images of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive buy tickets in a matter of seconds two taps and you're set tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email i'm telling you right now i have used this app it is a phenomenal app it is super super easy to use so download the game time app today create an account and use the promo code locked on mlb that's right. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code, locked in OB. You get $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And just know that the Astros, after the All Star break, start up the second half of the season against the Angels. Okay. Friday, 8 38 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search Astros. All right. So just going back to the ER, ERA race, the Astros are the only team that's consistent. Uh, if you look at the overall team ERA, they are second to the Braves in terms of team ERA okay. with the 3.66 ERA. And then uh, the Braves have a 3.63 ERA. So if you look at that, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the Astros actually have 44 quality starts. The, uh, the only teams with more are the Minnesota Twins with 46 and the Mariners, who we just faced with 47. So, oh, um, wow. So the Astros are up there in terms of the rotation. So for the guys that you have out there that Dusty has been given this year because of injuries, I think the Astros rotation deserves at least the A-. minus. Oh, yeah, definitely. Shoot. I mean, you may want to give them some bonus points with an A-plus reading that stuff off. I mean, you may want to be like me. You know, I, I try to be bullish – on my grades, but look, no, you changed your answer because I changed. I, I well, you well, but I <laughs> use right. objectionable material and evidence that you gave me. I right. didn't just willy nilly this change, right? But you know, the relief pitching staff. I know they've been some of the best in baseball, but lately they've been through their ups and downs. Um, you know, I gave them a B. Okay, I gave them a B. I might go B plus, but they just have. I mean. And some of the big reasons for that was Stanek hasn't been himself. Montero until lately hasn't been himself. Um, when you've got brought guys up, Parker, guys like that, they haven't really done what they needed to do. You you do have your back end guys. Neres has become hittable the last few games. So I'm just kind of judging where they are now. Now, certain parts of this first half, Eric, I definitely give this relief pitching core an A+. Plus. But if we're grading right now on where they are right now, I have to give them a B. And I feel good about giving them that B because I think they've earned it. I don't think B is a bad grade, but I think to be an A, you have to be consistent from beginning to end. Because this is the final exam over the over the full first half this semester. It's not just what have you done for me lately. It's a, a culmination of everything. So what would you say? What would your grade be for the relief pitchers? I would say it's kind of between a B and a B plus. The only reason I would say that is they're still fourth in baseball with the 3.56 ERA. They do have 30 save, no, sorry, 26 saves um, and 39 save opportunities. Uh, they do have a lot of strikeouts, 357. Um, they, they're, they are allowing a opponents a 228 batting average uh they have allowed uh, they have um, a 16 and 15 record overall but the reason why i would give them a little bit higher than probably you would is 
the situations they've been thrown in and the starting pitching because of their youth, because they've been relying on people that haven't gone deep in games and the uh, people getting hurt. You've had to overuse these guys. Like we have Maton, Anaris, and other guys that are um, approaching. They're probably going to pitch more innings than they've ever done in their career. Uh, as opposed to last year where you had, the starting pitchers go really deep into the games and you, you rarely had to use them that much. And then you had them strong for October. So that's my right. big concern here. And so if you're, you're probably gonna, that's why you probably saw Montero kind of hit a wall and kind of struggle a little bit. So I think that what Montero is doing now, he's kind of had some time to uh, just reflect and kind of get back to who he is. I still don't think we're going to see that same dominant Montero we saw last year, but I think we're going to see a more of what we've been seeing recently, which is a guy that can get some outs versus that dominant guy we saw last year. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'll have to agree with everything you say there just because, Look, at, at the end of the day, I think you've got the horses in the barn to be able to go into the playoffs. Um, I do think that they need help here, and maybe they get a reliever. Look, Dana goes, I want to start a reliever and a bat. Well, <laughs> that's that's great. Like, I remember all the things I wanted for Christmas when I was a kid. I didn't ever get everything I wanted. But realistically, if even if Montero, like I said, I think on last show, if he could be 70% of what he was last year, or he can be even like he was these last seven and one-thirds innings um, that he's pitched, and Ryan Stanek can bring his ERA down, I don't I don't know that the need is as desperate for a, le a relief arm as it is for a starting arm for the very reasons that you've mentioned, the, the usage – and, you know, it's all about load management. We use that word a lot on our show. But load management is key in with these rookies. So um, moving on to the all, moving on to the defense before we get to the offense, okay? Um, the defense, Eric, I gave a C plus. I, I just feel like this, this grade has really been, has a lot more, maybe it has a recency bias in it for me. There's just a lot of things. I think when Martin Maldonado continues to be. I knew that name was coming. Late, <laughs> well, when when you put a guy that has four pass balls in one game, when you put a guy who cannot throw a single runner out, I mean, the runner could be slow as Christmas on a cold day, and Martin Maldonado will not throw the runner out. The Machete, I love Martin Maldonado, and I've been his biggest advocate on this show, but he is not very good defensively. Yeah, he was kind of the only offense for a couple games or 19 innings with the Astros with two solo home runs, but we're talking about defense here. Jeremy Pena, some of the errant throws, some of the errors they've made early on. Abreu was still getting used to. Um, I, I just there are just some things that I've seen out in the field that I think this team can do better. They are not a great defensive team, and that's why I give them a C plus. Um, I would say it's more towards a B, a B minus maybe. Uh, just be, if you look at the stats, the stats um, they have the tenth best uh, fielding percentage, actually. They're tied probably for the sixth best fielding percentage at 987. Um, it, so in and also um, if you're looking at the errors, they have the uh, tenth, uh, maybe the ninth fewest errors with uh, 43. So I know that you, you what you you think of what just happened recently with the Jeremy Pena uh, error that led to that uh, run scoring, and you think of everything that's happened recently, um, and. It, uh, what's the like if if uh, like a if like if snowball turns into a boulder or like a avalanche or something like that? Right. I'm trying to think of the phrase, but you talking about you talking about basically as the snow as, as it rolls downhill, it gets bigger. Are you yeah. Talking about so that? yeah, that's what you're thinking of. So uh, it's just like you're thinking of everything that's recently um, in in this. But the Astros are treading water right now and uh they literally in the past 25 games are 13 and 12 and so they haven't been playing their best baseball and a lot of it has to do with fatigue uh, they are trying to do too much because they are not scoring a lot of runs and uh, they are not giving enough um, support to the pitching and so the pitchers are trying to do too much the offense is trying to hit an eight run home run every time and eight run home run wow yeah so every Eric, this is what's interesting, okay? You're a math teacher. I'm a, I'm a Texas history teacher by our occupation. And what's funny is I'm being tougher. What's a Texas history teacher supposed to be easier on grading where the math guy, 
Like you can't if if I get two plus two is six, Eric can't give partial credit for well at least you wrote something right. Like usually the math guy and I think it's interesting and guys that was completely unintentional. We didn't plan this out and we like this go opposite of who we are in our profession. But I think it's kind of interesting. Um, and and that's why it works so well with us being on the show, dude. Um, but look, I, I think I think you make some excellent points. Now, offensively speaking. Offensively speaking, okay, um, I give them a B, B and, and and maybe some people would say a, a B might be too high, um, but I think with what they've been able to do lately and show the power and up their numbers, I know it's inconsistent uh, with Abreu heating up, with, with Kyle Tucker heating up, and I still consider contributions from Dubon, from Jolks, from McCormick, um, you know, I think when Peña and Bregman come around, and I think when Alvarez and Altuve show up, you're going to have an A-plus offense. I gave them a B. What do you give the offense? Um, I would say C-plus. I just think okay. it, it's really because they really haven't produced consistently. Uh, you've seen the big offensive outputs. You had the back-to-back games of double, double digits, but – uh, they still struggled to score runs. And you saw in the Mariner series where in the three losses, they only scored one run in each game. And uh, it's just, uh, there's too many times where you have, um, you just don't have the big bopper in there in Alvarez and you don't have Altuve in there. He's only played 32 games. And I think you said yesterday that Alvarez and Altuve have only been in the lineup 14 times together. 14 and times. That's insane. Brent, Brantley hasn't picked up a bat this year um, for the Houston Astros. So Kids, you are, Brantley ain't playing. Right. And you've uh, you've basically been relying on a whole bunch of people that uh, you started the season with David Hensley and Mauricio Dubon, ba- basically platooning at second base. Then Dubon's like, uh, yeah, go away. Um, uh, bye, Felicia. <laughs> and basically, uh, Doobie just took over that role. And he really should have been an all-star based on what he did in that situation exactly. to re- to replace somebody like that. But if you look at the stats for the Astros offensively, they are not as bad as we might think. Uh, in terms right. of home runs, they've actually picked it up recently. They are 11th um, in the league with uh, home runs with 108. And if you look at OPS, that's what's kind of killing them is, mm. uh, oops, uh, so th- they aren't clicking too many buttons. They are 17th with OPS with 723. Oh, wow. And so that's where the Astros are is, yes, they're, they're hitting some home runs, but they're not getting that consistent offense. They're not getting on base enough. Actually, they are getting on base a, a little bit, but they're just not necessarily getting the crucial hits. So where are they in terms of on base percentage? Because they do get on base a lot. It's just – um, actually, they don't. Uh, their on base percentage is only 316, which wow. is um, 19th in baseball. So I was right. So, so, so this is what's interesting, too. And I can't remember what year it was. I think Berkman was a part of this core. I don't know if you heard it the other day, but this is the first time there's been three Astros with 55 RBIs or more at the All Star break. It's Alvarez, Tucker, and Bregman, I believe. And they haven't had that since I think it was Berkman and I don't know who the others were. Maybe Derek Bell. I don't know. I don't I don't remember. It's been a while. But look, if you're out there and you are looking for some help, you might be the person in someone's life that is always trying to fix their problems. People come to you. They talk to you. You're willing to talk to your friends because you really care about who they are. But look at you can't always be that voice. Sometimes you have to have someone listen to you, whether you're dealing with decisions about your career, about relationships or anything else. Therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement, trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets and better help is here to help you. I've personally used better help. It's phenomenal. What I love about it is an easy to use service that you can use from your cell phone. You don't have to go to an office, sit in a waiting room, see other people looking at you, wondering why you're there. You go to the BetterHelp app, you select your counselor, you set up the time and you meet with them one on one. And if at any time during those counseling sessions, you feel like you need to change therapist, you can do that at no cost. So 
you just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with them and you, again, switch therapists with no extra charge. You um, let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. So visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB today and you will get 10% off your first group of visits. That's BetterHelp.com, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnMLB. Check them out today. A better you. Get better help today. And don't forget that if you and your buddies want to go somewhere and hang out and watch the Astros take control of the American League West, then you know you got to go to Hooters. You can go to Katy, Pearland, Baytown, Galveston, Humble, Stafford, Sugarland, anywhere in between. I promise you, you won't want to miss out on some of these things coming up at the Pearland area. Hooters, they're going to have a Toys for Tots fundraiser the 17th through the 31st of this month. Halfway to Christmas for two weeks, they will be collecting donations for Toys for Tots. There will have a car wash to raise funds for Toys for Tots July 15th, coming up from 2 to 4 p.m. Then an Astros bus trip July 25th. It's $100 per ticket, limited seating. The tickets include a wing buffet before departing, ride to the game and tickets, and you return to the trip. You, you return to the store after the trip. There's also going to be a store pageant on August 17th, 7 p.m. More info to come. And make sure that you are there for their weekly specials. You have Monday through Friday happy hour, 2 to 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. to close. Join us anytime with $3 Blue Moon Drafts and $9.99 Michelob Ultra Pitchers. No matter the occasion, Hooters is ready to make you happy. Get served by the world's famous Hooters girls and let them know that the Locked on Astros guys sent you. And don't forget that this may be the all-star break, but the Astros kick back off the second half of the season as they charge to an AL West division title in the postseason, and they play the Angels Friday, 8.38 p.m. Central Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. You got to love them West Coast games. It's, um, it's But at least it's 8.38 versus 9.05. So um, looking at the Rangers, I know the Astros are only two games behind the Rangers right now. Their on-base percentage is 341. So you have the Astros at 316. If you're looking at the team with the worst on-base percentage, it's the Kansas City Royals. Uh, <laughs> they are at 295, and the Astros are at 316. So they're only 21 points ahead of the Royals right now. So that wow. Is well, when you put it like that, Eric, I'm t- maybe our grades, maybe our grades are a little high. I mean, look, I I still think, and maybe I'm grading on potential. It's like when you, it's like when you, when you write that grade on that paper, and you know that that kid really can do better. Mm-hmm. You're like. But I just feel like he should get an A or she should get an A just because they're always so good. This is the one time I have to put a seven or a six as that first number, right? So I think it's tough to see, tough to say now. My question is this. So we've gone starting pitching, relief pitching, defense and offense, the manager and GM. We're just going to go manager, GM. I, I'm going to give you both of my grades. Manager, I'm going to give a C minus and GM. I'm going to give a grade that I only give when a kid transfers or has come in and doesn't have enough grades to really grade. Dana Brown doesn't have enough grades. If I'm grading the former, what Jim Crane did in the off season, I'm giving an F no, an F for the off season. I'm giving an incomplete for Dana Brown. So right now my overall grade for the GM situation is an incomplete. I'm giving a C minus to the manager. What about you? Um, I would say that considering um, just like as uh, we are teachers, uh, we get the best kids that they have that are zoned to the school and that they don't keep the good ones at home. So we, we get all the kids and whether they're best kids or terrible kids, we still have to teach them. Uh, we have to have them in our classroom all year long. So Dusty Baker is the same situation. He's uh, dealt with the all the injuries and everything. Yes, has he made some silly moves? Yes, um, has he the, the lineup flip-flopping? I wish he would leave Bregman hitting cleanup. I'm sure there's some analytical reason for that. But I wouldn't give him a C for that. I would give him more of a B, B okay. minus. Okay. Based on what he's been given this year, um, I don't think this is Dusty's fault. The players have not lived up to their expectations. There's only a few players that really have. 
from Rivaldez has uh, Ryan Presley for most of the season has lived up to expectations. Hector Neris, he probably should have been all-star. Um, Kyle Tucker is finally starting to live up to what he was. Uh, I mean, he's been good, but I think he's finally doing that. Oh, yeah, um, then Alvarez is uh, when healthy, he's one of the best players in the game, but you've had too much is in, in too many injuries, too many, oh, I'm sorry, coach, I can't play at all this year, or maybe I'll see you next year type situation with Michael Brantley and Lance McCullers to uh, it just, it's just a bad situation. And so I'm not going to blame this on Dusty. Has he made some silly decisions and like roster, roster decisions and uh, like why the heck is Bly Madrez up here and Greg Kessinger and David Hensley if you're not going to play them and all that? I think, I mean, I don't know why you I think even John Singleton is going to be the difference, but he's at least got some major league experience and he could be somebody that you a left-handed hitter you can bring off, off bring up off the bench and maybe hit a home run. Yeah, he'll probably strike out. Look, but at least he'll hit a home run. Maybe. Look, the Manners had a had a big lefty in there the other day, and they had one lefty on on the in the lineup because you know he was sitting people or they were injured and you just couldn't really attack that guy yeah. because he was abysmal with lefties and look john singleton hit another home run um he's hitting for power he's hitting for average um will he come down to earth at some point while he's in triple a he may but he's a low risk high reward kind of guy and he may be a guy you have the word surprises on here. We talked about the surprises and how how Dubon's really stepped up, how JP France has been there, how how Ronel Blanco has has been a pleasant surprise. Um, you know, I was surprised that Abreu's slump lasted as long as it did, but now I like the Jose Abreu we right. have. Um, but just at the end of the day, like Dusty and the Duke. The Maldonado thing. I love Maldonado. We've been one of his biggest fans on this show. But I just think it's time, man. After watching what Diaz can do at the plate on a consistent basis, knowing that his average is like ridiculously higher when he plays either first or catcher as opposed to DH, Maldonado deserves to be sitting three of five or four or five games each five games. We know it's probably not going to happen. But that's what needs to happen. And I think Diaz is probably your future starter unless Corey Lee does something to leapfrog him, which at this point, no offense to Corey Lee, I, I just don't see it happening. Why? Because Diaz is making it happen. Diaz has got crazy offensive numbers. His pop time is amazing. His his throwout rate is unreal. And you could get a slot to steal second base right now on Maldonado and how bad he's been behind the plate. And – I know what he used to be. He's just not who he is anymore. And so maybe it's time for the second half. Maybe Dusty wakes up. Because I don't think some – I think analytics, they do rely on them heavily, but sometimes I don't think these decisions are based on analytics, all based on feeling. All right. Uh, so with Jose Abreu, I just looked at his past 49 games. He's batting 255 with on-base percentage of 304, slugging percentage of 419 on base percentage of 722 with seven home runs, 31 RBIs, 13 walks. Uh, that's in uh, 184 plate appearances or at, at bats. Uh, so he's got nine doubles as well, 47 hits. Um, so he is getting the job done. And so I think that if he's more of that type player, he doesn't need to hit 300. He just needs to hit 250 with some power, so with some doubles. And I think uh, he can help this Astros offense. But the biggest thing that's going to help the Astros offense is you've got to eventually – you can't hide Martin Maldonado anymore. You, you don't have the offense anymore. You don't yeah. have Charles Gray. You don't have George Springer. You don't have a, a lot of these players anymore. you got to get somebody else playing catcher, and that's not Martin Maldonado. you got to move on, and you got to have some better options on the bench. That is key, and I don't want to. I don't want to extend this too long, but you use the word hide, and that's a key word. When you have an offense one through seven or one through eight, that's producing right. on a consistent basis. Martin Maldonado doesn't hurt you, even if behind the plate he makes some defensive, you know, footballs, you know, errors here or there. 
Yeah, he can catch every once in a while. I don't mind him catching um, a lot of games. I mean, like two games a week, but he doesn't need to be the everyday catcher. So I think the Astros need to, once uh, everybody's healthy, once you have Alvarez and Altuve back in the lineup, the Astros are going to have to make a decision because D- Yiner Diaz has started to slump a little bit, but you don't want to take his bat out of the lineup. And so the Astros are going to have to make a decision. Maldi or Diaz? <laughs> I don't think that's that hard a decision, Astro. So uh, we'll have to see. And so we'll do another one tomorrow where we go ahead and look at the draft pick since we didn't yeah, get around to it uh, yeah. this time. Uh, but the Astros have made some interesting draft uh, choices. And uh, so I think that uh, day three will bring some more. And so we'll talk about that. We may look back at some great plays from the first half. So thank you for subscribing to the Locked on Astros podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Uh, my name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter, Eric Talk Stros, and you can find Brett at HL Wilhoffs. And if you do not agree with what we said today, go and let us know and go ahead and give us your opinion as well in the comments, on Twitter, wherever you want to. Um, as long as you do it in a civilized uh, fashion, we will do so in return. <laughs> so that's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. And go Stros, and let's watch the home run derby. Man, you sure are bullish on grades. <laughs>